These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Market. Their names are Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine. These two very and these two very old people are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket have a small boy whose name is Charlie Bucket. This is Charlie. How do you do? And how do you do? And how do you do again? He is pleased to meet you. The whole of this family, the six grown-ups, Compton and little Charlie Bucket lived together in a small wooden house on the edge of Brick Town. The house wasn't nearly large enough for so many people, and life was extremely uncomfortable for them all. For them all, there was only two rooms in two rooms in the place altogether, and there was only one bed. The bed was given to the four old grandparents because they were so old and tired. They were so tired they never got out of it. Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine on this side, from Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina on this side, Mr. and Mrs. Bucket and little Charlie Bucket slept in the other room of a mattress on the floor. There wasn't any question for them being able to buy a better house or even, even one more bed to sleep in. They were far too poor for that. Mr. Bucket was the only person with a family with a job. He worked in a suspect factory where he sat all day long and screwed the little caps onto the tops of the tubes after the toothpaste had been filled. But a toothpaste cap screwer is never paid very much money. And poor Mr. Bucket, however hard he worked and however fast he screwed, was never paid very much money, one half of the things that so large in the family needed. There wasn't even enough money to buy proper food for them all. The only meals they could afford were bread and margarine for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch, and cabbage soup for, for supper. Sundays were a bit better. They all looked forward to Sundays because then, although they had exactly the same, everyone was allowed a second helping. The buckets, of course, didn't starve, didn't starve, but every one of them, the two old grandfathers, the two old grandmothers, Charlie's father, Charlie's mother, and especially little Charlie himself, went about from morning till night with a horrible empty feeling in their tummies. Charlie felt it worth all, and although his father and mother often went without their own share of lunch or supper so that they did they could give give it to him. It still wasn't nearly large enough for a growing boy. Desperately wanted something more filling and satisfying than cabbage and cabbage soup. The one thing he longed longed for more than anything else was chocolate. Walking to school in the morning, Charlie could see a Charlie could see great glass of chocolate piled up high in the shop windows, and he. He would stop and stare it and press his nose against the glass, his mouth watering like mad. Many times a day, he would see other children taking bars of creamy chocolate out of their pockets, pockets and munching them greedily, and that, of course, were pure torture. Only once a year, on his birthday, did Charlie Bucket ever get to taste a bit of chocolate. The whole family saved up their money for that special occasion, occasion, and when he, when the great day arrived, Charlie's, Charlie was our away present, present with with one small chocolate bar to eat, but it all by himself. And each time he received it, once the, on those mar marvelous birthday mornings. He placed it care carefully in a small wooden box that he owned and treasured it, it as it as though it were it was it were a bar of solid gold and for the next few days he will allow himself only to look at it but never to touch touch it. Then at last 
when he could stand it no longer, he would peel back a tiny bit of paper wrapping at one corner to expose the tiny bit of chocolate cho of chocolate. And then he would take in a tiny nibble just enough to allow the lovely sweet taste to spread out slowly over his tongue. The next day he would take another tiny nibbled nibbled so so on and so on. And this way Charlie would make his six penny bar of birthday chocolate last him for more than um, more than a month.